Welcome to Medicare's Earnings Conference Call for the year ended December 31st, 2019. My name is Joanna and I will be your conference operator for today's call. At this time, all participants are in the listen-only mode. Before we proceed, I would like to remind everyone that this pres presentation contains forward-looking statements relating to future results, events, and expectations which are made pursuant to the safe harbor provisions of the U.S. Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Forward-looking <coughs> forward statements involve known and unknown risk, risks and uncertainties, which could cause the company's actual results to differ materially from those in the forward-looking statements. Such risks and uncertainties include, among others, those described in the company's most recent annual information form and Form 20-F. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. Please note that this conference call is being recorded and today's date is April 16, 2020. I would now like to turn the conference call over to Dr. Albert Friesen, Chief Executive Officer of Medicare, Inc. Please go ahead, Dr. Friesen. Uh, thanks, moderator, and uh, good morning to all on the call. We appreciate your interest and participation in today's call. Joining me today is James Kinley, Chief Financial Officer, and Dr. Neil Owens, President and Chief Operating Officer. The sales and marketing of Agristat continues to be the main source of income and profit. Agristat still has the majority of the patient market in the U.S. The margins continue to decline from the, through the fourth quarter of 2019, by and large because of price competition from generic Integralin, and there was some reduction in the class use of the class of drugs, the 2B3A inhibitors. Medicare is presently refocusing the sales and marketing effort to retain and, re and regain some of the Agristat business. The revenue of the tw year 2019 was 20 million, which was down from the 29 million uh, in 2018. Agristat was the majority of that, 19.4 million, 183,000 came from Zipinamag and 619 from REDS. We had a loss of 19.8 million, which may, is mainly made up of about 13 million, a combination of impairment on the REDS intangible assets, a write down on inventory, and foreign exchange. Plus, the remaining uh, was an uh, investment in the sales and marketing of Zipidemag and REDS. Sales and, of Zipidemag and REDS were much lower, slower than anticipated. Sales of Zipidemag are now starting to pick up, but the sales of REDS devices continues to be a challenge, and it was decided to take a significant impairment of the asset. Medicare's plan, which was begun to be implemented in the first quarter of 2020, is to reduce operating expenses on red sales and marketing with the goal of balancing the cost and retaining the value of the investment in sensible medical. The main focus at the present is on the sales and marketing of Agristat and Zipinamag, which continue to have great margins and potential. Medicare had obtained a major non-dilutive influx of cash with the purchase and subsequent sale of Apicor so it was decided to share this with our shareholders in a substantial issuer bid, in which Medicare used about 26 million Canadian to purchase up to 4 million of our common shares for cancellation at a set price of $6.50. We value our shareholders, and we believe that this is an appropriate way to share the profits from the sale of Apicor with the owners of Medicare who supported the growth of our company. Further, we believe our recent investments and programs initiated for our new products will provide the growth in revenue and profits from the for the coming years. It takes time and persistence to make this a reality. Our shareholders have been patient in the past, and we believe the SIP was a good way to provide a near-term value as we build an even stronger future. Medicare has a good cardiovascular product portfolio a track record of growing sales and marketing at a great team with energy, talent, and experience to build a strong, growing company. Medicare's focus is to continue with a strong Agristat franchise and growing the sales of Zipidame while building out our cardiovascular product portfolio over the coming years with a strong commitment to sales and profitability. But now I'd like to turn the call over to Chief Financial Officer, James Kinley, 
to review and provide some color on the financial results of the uh, 2019. Thank you, Bert, and good morning, everyone. A couple of quick items to note before I start. All dollar figures are in Canadian dollars unless otherwise noted by each presenter. And as a reminder, you can obtain a complete copy of our financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2019, along with previous financial statements on the investors page of our website. And a copy of the financial statements and management's discussion and analysis can be obtained from CDAR.com. I will take you through the key highlights of financial performance for the year ended December 31st, 2019. Total revenues for the year ended December 31st, 2019 were 20.2 million compared to 29.1 million for the, for the year ended December 31st, 2018. Net revenues from Agristat for 2019 totaled 19.4 million, a decrease from net revenues from Agristat for 2018 of 28.5 million. Net revenues from Agristat for the three months ended December 31st, 2019 totaled 3 million, a decrease from net revenues of Agristat for the fourth quarter of 2018 of 8.2 million. The decrease in revenues from Agristat is due to higher discounted selling prices of the product due to increased pricing pressures from generic versions of Integralin and some volume decreases experienced during the year. During the year ended December 31st, 2019, REDS contributed revenue of 618,000 from the sale of the product in the United States. Revenue from Zepidamag totaled 183,000 for 2019 compared to 652,000 for 2018. The decrease in Zepidamag product sales for 2019 is a result of initial stocking at the wholesaler level during 2018. The company expects Zepidamag revenues to grow throughout 2020 and beyond. Turning to cost of goods sold, Agristat cost of goods sold for the year ended December 31st, 2019 totaled 3.5 million compared to 3.7 million for 2018. This resulted in gross margins for the year ended December 31st, 2019 of approximately 82%, a decrease from approximately 87% uh, margin for 2018. Red's cost of goods sold for 2019 totaled 904,000 and consisted of 263,000 paid to sensible medical in relation to Red's from the revenue sharing arrangement related to the products sold by the company during 2019 and 641,000 related to amortization of the REDS license prior to the impairment recorded over the REDS intangible assets. Zepidamag cost of goods sold totaled 1.9 million for the year ended December 31st, 2019, but contained 797,000 of amortization of the Zepidamag intangible assets and 1 million from a write down of Zepidamag inventories. Removal of the amortization and inventory write-down resulted in a gross margin from the product of approximately 80%. The company also recorded an impairment loss on the write-down of inventory of S&P of 940000 recorded during the year ended December 31st, 2019, as a result of reduced selling prices for the product currently being experienced in the market pertaining to S&P. Selling expenses totaled $13.4 million for the year ended December 31st, 2019, down from $15.6 million for 2018. The reduction in selling expenses when compared to the prior year is a result of Zepidamag launch costs incurred during 2018. General and administrative expenses totaled $3.4 million for the year ended December 31st, 2019, down from $3.9 million for 2018. The decrease primarily relates to lower stock-based compensation expenses incurred during the year ended December 31st, 2019 when compared to the prior year. Research and development expenses for 2019 totaled $4.3 million compared to $6.7 million for 2018. Research and development expenses for the current period relate primarily to additional development projects which are underway. Medicare is in the process of developing additional generic cardiovascular products with the cost of each ANDA development project being approximately $2 million. Consistent with our research and development strategy to focus on low cost projects with higher probabilities for success. And we don't expect our research and development costs to increase relative to this. On December 5th, 2019, the company reached a settlement agreement with the buyer in the APICOR sales transaction with respect to the amounts held back. A settlement agreement was reached under which the company received 5.1 million US in relation to the holdback receivable. In connection with this settlement, the amounts owing to the former president of Apocor, which were recorded as an other long-term liability, were settled. 
Immediately prior to the settlement, the company reduced the carrying value on the statement of financial position of the holdback receivable by $3.6 million to the net recoverable value from the negotiated settlement. The company has considered indicators of impairment regarding its intangible assets, and during the year ended December 31, 2019, the company recorded a write-down of intangible assets related to the REDS license totaling $6.3 million as a result of uncertainties with REDS being experienced in regards to the length of the sales cycle and uptake of the product with customers, resulting in the company's sales being below the committed amounts required by the exclusive marketing and distribution agreement regarding REDS. The company did not record any write-down of intangible assets during the year ended December 31, 2018. The company recorded finance income of $1.1 million for, the, for 2019. This relates to interest on the company's cash balances and short-term investments offset by the change in the fair value of the company's royalty obligation and was consistent with the interest income for the year ended December 31, 2018. The company recorded a loss of $2.6 million for foreign exchange for the year ended December 31, 2019 compared to a gain of $6.5 million for 2018. The foreign exchange loss during 2019 resulted from decreases in the U.S. exchange rate during 2019, which applies to the U.S. dollar cash balances held by the company throughout the year. The income tax expense of $145,000 during the year ended December 31, 2019 is primarily related to changes to the company's tax loss carry forwards in Barbados during the period compared to income tax expense of $897,000 during the year ended December 31, 2018 which resulted from taxable income in the United States from the company's commercial business during the period. This results in a net loss for the year ended December 31, 2019 of $19.8 million or $1.32 per share, compared to net income of $3.9 million or $0.25 cents per share for the year ended December 31, 2018. Adjusted EBITDA for the year ended December 31, 2019 was negative $3.8 million compared to adjusted EBITDA of $418,000 for the year ended December 31, 2018. The decrease is primarily due to lower revenues experienced during 2019. The company also recorded a $6.3 million charge to reduce the value of the company's investment in sensible medical. This charge flows through other comprehensive loss, resulting in a total comprehensive loss of $26.8 million compared to comprehensive income of $4.5 million for the year ended December 31, 2018. As at December 31, 2019, the company had cash totaling $13 million compared to $71.9 million as of December 31, 2018. As of December 31, 2019, the company had working capital of $19.7 million compared to $72.7 million for 2018. The decrease in cash and working capital related to the $10 million investment made by the company in Sensible Medical, the $10 million U.S. spent on acquiring the full Zepidemag rights, $26 million used to repurchase the company's shares under its substantial issuer bid, $4.1 million used to repurchase shares under the company's normal course issuer bids, and the net loss experienced during 2019. Additionally, the buildup of inventory of $2.1 million also contributed to the decrease in cash. As of December 31, 2019, the company did not have any debt recorded on its statement of financial position. I wanted to remind you there will be an opportunity at the end of today's call for you to ask questions regarding the financial results of the company as a whole, and with that, I'd like to turn the call over to our President and Chief Operating Officer, Dr. Neil Owens, for some additional commentary regarding our operations. Thanks, James, and good morning, everyone. Medicare's commercial team remains steadfast in the execution of our strategic plan focused on the sale of cardiovascular products for the U.S. market, despite facing market challenges in 2019. Agrostat maintains the majority of the patient market share in the United States, despite a decrease in sales in 2019. Based on our strong relationships with physicians and key opinion leaders in the 1,200 plus U.S. hospitals where Agrostat is used, we believe there are opportunities to increase sales through a renewed marketing focus. The major market challenge was pricing pressure from generic Integralin products, which had the most impact on 2019 net revenue from Agrostat due to decreased margins. We look forward to the reaction from the cardiology community to a Medicare-sponsored clinical study called Savvy PCI, 
and we are working with the steering committee to present the results in 2020. Turning our attention to Zepidemag, there was a significant expansion in pharmacy benefit coverage in 2019, and we continue to focus on improving coverage. This process was greatly facilitated by our control of pricing and rebates through the acquisition of the Zepidemag New Drug Application, or NDA, in Q3 of 2019. We expect to continue to expand coverage as bid cycles come up for review and negotiation. In conjunction to coverage, Medicare is focused on making access to Zepidemag as straightforward as possible for physicians and patients, and is exploring innovative ways to provide pharmacy and prior authorization support, as well as home delivery. We're also pursuing consumer marketing strategies to explain the benefits of Zepidemag over other statins directly to consumers. At the end of 2019, Medicare implemented a new voucher program for eligible patients to receive their first 30-day supply of Zepidemag for free when they redeem their savings card at their local pharmacy. This is a lower cost program overall compared to pro providing sample boxes at each clinic and provides more information on patient use, as well as an incentive for patients to visit their local pharmacy to stock the product. Overall, whilst growth in sales has been slower than hoped for, there continues to be month over month growth in new and repeat prescriptions with prescriptions filled nationwide. Our sales team continues to build the number of prescribers and is pursuing creative ways to facil facilitate peer-to-peer -peer discussions. It is expected that sales will accelerate through improved coverage, access, and the execution of our marketing strategy. The marketing and sales partnership with Sensible Medical for the REDS device has faced its own challenges in 2019. The device is used to measure lung fluid levels in patients with heart failure and those with lung fluid management problems. In Q3 2019, we announced the launch of the REDS Pro system, which provides several improvements over the REDS vest, including ease of use and more rapid lung fluid measurement. The response from purchasers and practitioners was very positive. However, it effectively reset the sales cycle for accounts that were in the process of reviewing the REDS vest, as they nearly unanimously wanted to evaluate the PRO. In Q4, the PRO REDS system was sold by Medicare to five accounts in the US, a combination of both hospitals and private clinics. We look forward to continue servicing these accounts and building off of these early adopters with surrounding hospitals and clinics. Overall, sales were below expectation. This is in part because U.S. hospitals are facing budget shortfalls and capital equipment purchases face a lengthy approval process where purchases are often delayed. Because of this, we expect the sales cycle to continue to be slower than hoped for. We continue to explore creative financing and ways to commercialize the product to facilitate access to the REDS device. In addition to branded products, in Q3 2019, Medicare added sodium nitroprusside to our product offering. Sales have also been slower than expected due to hospital contract negotiation, but sales began and we expect sales to improve throughout 2020. Medicare continues to develop additional cardiovascular abbreviated new drug applications or ANDAs for in-hospital use. At this time, we are not going to release details about the identity of the other products, but they are congruent with the relationships and expertise we have established with Agristat and sodium nitroprusside. In summary, Medicare expects continued success from its lead commercial product, Agristat, through a renewed marketing focus and has redoubled efforts to grow the sales of Zipinamag through a dedicated and driven commercial team. With that, I would like to turn the call back to Dr. Friesen for final comments. Thank you, Neil. 2019 was a year in transition with a sales and marketing focus on two products which were added in 2018 for diversification to our main cardiovascular product, Agristat. There was considerable learning which will be the basis for a market push for 2020. We're thankful for Agristat, the additional cardio assets and the strong balance sheet. We continue to focus on growing the business with a pipeline of cardiovascular products that will further diversify our revenue and asset base, carefully investing to grow our future profitability. 
my goal and that of our board, management, and staff is to continue to build this business with a stable, long-term outlook to generate in value for our shareholders. And as always, I want to express my sincere appreciation to the outstanding team of employees we've been blessed with. Thank you to our shareholders for your continued support and interest. And now, moderator, I'll turn it over to you to manage the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Should you have a question, please press the star followed by the one on your touchtone phone. You will hear a three-tone prompt acknowledging your request. And if you are using a speakerphone, please lift the handset before pressing any keys. One moment, please, for your first question. Your first question comes from Sam Robotsky from SCR Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, Dr. Friesen and Finley. Uh, tell me, as far as the REDS program, we're carrying that at $3.7 million uh, because we wrote off 6.3. Do, did was this a license for the U.S.? Did we own any other countries? Is it sold someplace else? It appears to be based in Israel. Could you give me some more uh, information relative to the Reds and Sensible Medical? I'll start. Um, thank you for the question. Yeah, the uh, we only uh, Medicare only sells it in uh, the U.S. It is sold in other countries, uh, which is uh, part of the sensible medical. Uh, I'll turn it over to James to talk about the write down. So we did write write down uh, 6.3 million, which was the value of the uh, license or the intangible asset, as well as 6.3 million related to the U.S. Uh, sorry, the investment in sensible medical. So when we acquired the license rights, we actually made an investment into Sensible Medical at that time as well. Uh, and so, it, as you stated, an, an Israeli-based company. Do we have any other interest other than our sales in the U.S.? And what what is the approximate sales total worldwide for this product? You indicated you sold 618,000 during the current year. Uh, we, I, we don't only sell in the U.S. Uh, our other interest is that we own a share in Sensible, but we don't have any marketing rights for the Reds device outside of the U.S. And we don't know what the sales were. It's a private company in the rest of the world. But I can say it's in the same, it's in the ballpark of our sales. It might be higher, but we don't know the exact number. Okay. Now, as far as your other products, you indicated you expect sales to be greater for the current year than than 2019. Could you sort of indicate uh, we have uh, completed the March quarter? Has the sales increased uh, in the first quarter in the U.S.? And has there been an impact from the coronavirus in the U.S.? on your sales? The, the first one, we, 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 um, we have in the, future, in the past uh, avoided projections and sales. We do expect sales to grow in 2020. Uh, the sales, the transition from our, our uh, marketing efforts in 2019 occurred in the first quarter, so we don't see significant uh, changes in the first quarter. But uh, we do see some trends to support our, uh, our comment that we do expect to have increased revenue for 2020. Uh, and when do we expect to report the first quarter sales and the profits and, and to have a conference call? Uh, we'd be looking at uh, the, the, uh, probably the second week of May. We'll be doing that. Second week of May. Okay. Uh, all right. It, do, do, we, do we plan to be profitable for the current year? Yes, we do. Okay. Thank you we've very made, much. Uh, yeah. Yes. We made we made uh, significant cost 
savings in the first quarter. Okay. You, 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 the, the buying back of the shares, which was significantly higher than the current value, and uh, you've, you've been very fortunate to do many transactions, which seem to be beneficial. Good luck going forward. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for your questions. And I didn't answer the one question about I was going to get to about COVID. So far, uh, there's certainly we only sell in the U.S., so obviously we have hospitals that we sell to that have been uh, significantly impacted by COVID. But uh, the uh, Agristat is used by and large in emergency, or it's called STEMI, emergency heart attacks. And although there's been some decline in the uh, uh, frequency reported, uh, we haven't yet seen a significant reduction in our uh, Agristat sales. Well, thank you. That seems good. Good luck. Uh, thank let's, you. Let's, okay. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As a reminder, should you have any questions, please press star 1 now. There are no further questions. You may proceed. Oh, I'm sorry. We do have one more question. Question comes from Robert Davis, an investor. Please go ahead. Thank you. There was uh, two reports about Agristat that were going to be released uh, studies. I was wondering yes. um, what the results are. Thank you. Uh, I don't know, Neil. Do you want to uh, share our, uh, the two reports, or do you want me to? Uh, basically, mm -hmm. we're we're needing uh, – well, go ahead, Neil. So those studies should be announced uh, shortly. We, we haven't re released any of those results yet. We're waiting for the steering committees to finish their, their analysis and, and, and reports. Uh, but we expect those to be released uh, quite shortly. Okay. Thank you. And I guess I have one more question. about. So the REDS original is – is now going to be replaced with the Reds Plus or the Reds Pro. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that it just it was it was a little confusing to understand that. So, are you still going ahead with the Reds Pro, or is that on on hold too? No, we're we're continuing uh, to uh, uh, market the Reds Pro. Uh, so what we're doing is we're marketing. What we're telling the street is that we've we've uh, transferred much of the much uh, much of the cost and the efforts that were being put on Reds to Zipenemag and back to Agristat. So we try to provide that information to the to the market. Uh, we will continue to pursue the uh, contacts that we have, but because it takes so long, and and the uh, sell cycle seems to be anywhere from nine months. Uh, and can even be a year. What we do is we don't need to. We can, we have a lot of contacts that we developed, and so now we can pursue those contacts with less cost to kind of close as many as we can, and then see how the year goes. So it's a major effort for us to save, save money and to re, uh, get back to profitability. But, but okay, thank you. But the hope is to maybe further out in the year or next year to see Reds Pro in the bottom line somewhere. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. That's all. That's the rest of my questions. Thanks. Thank you. There are no further questions. You may proceed. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for being on the call and look forward to uh, having you uh, on the uh, Q1 report for 2020. Thank you again. Have a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the conference call for today. We thank you for participating, and we ask that you please disconnect your lines.